Hi everyone, welcome to another video for uh, Broadcast Motion Graphics. And uh, in this video, we're going to be discussing how to make a digital puppet. Uh, a digital puppet is uh, basically kind of like a stop motion puppet uh, where you make the character in parts using any digital software, kind of like Photoshop, Illustrator, um, and then you assemble them together to make a puppet, a character like you're seeing the one on the screen, this cowboy here in the desert. Um, this is a really cool way to make a uh, quick 2D animation. Uh, it's similar to South Park and a lot of other um, cartoons that use this technique. Uh, there are other software that does similar things as well, like Toon Boom. Um, and um, this is uh, one of the fun things to be doing here with After Effects when, aside from doing editing and motion graphics. Uh, this technically is motion graphics, but because since we're making it as a character, uh, you know, now it becomes more of a regular 2D traditional um, style of animation. So here in Photoshop, I created this little scenery with this character here. It's a very simple little cowboy. Um, and I have everything in layers that needs to be animated. So one thing that is uh, very important whenever you're animating something in After Effects is that the uh, each component that needs to move has to be on its own layers. So for example, um, here I have clouds that can move by themselves in a separate layer and they're actually behind these hills. Okay, so I can move them around like that. Uh, the land here, this layer, when I turn it off and on, you can see that it's all one thing. So I cannot move the cactus by themselves because they're all attached to the hills and the ground. Um, however, the man, he is made up of different parts. They have a hat, we have a head, you can see there. Uh, even the star on his chest is by itself, okay? So everything is done with individual um, ideas in mind so that I can move this character independently uh, rather than trying to manipulate it um, as a whole. Okay, so this file is saved already in um, as a PSD file, which I provide in the uh, file section of the week four. Uh, now here in After Effects, I'm just gonna either go to new composition or first let's actually double click in our bin area. We can actually also access that from import file, import file, okay, or double click in your bin. And let me go to the correct folder and uh, right here, puppet. Here's the PSD file. Now, before you just go ahead and hit import, it's very important that you come down to where it says import as. Right now, it says footage. And if I leave it at that, it will come in as a picture. Okay, we don't want that. What we want is composition, comp I'm sorry, composition, retain, layer, sizes. Okay, so this option here. So we'll click on that and hit import. And then it'll ask you again, this little uh, drop down menu will appear here, and you can leave everything the same, hit OK. And immediately here in your bin, you have two things that show up. The first is the composition. Okay, so normally we will go to composition, new composition, control N, or click on the icon right here to create a new composition. But because we're bringing in from Photoshop, it already has the settings that we want. Um, let me go back to Photoshop for, for a moment. Here in Photoshop, if you ever, I don't know if you're aware of this, but if you ever go to uh, create a new project, uh, take note of right up here. Okay, so you have recent saved, but this is what's important. You have photo, print, art and illustration, web, mobile, film and video. Since my project in After Effects is gonna be a film and video, click on that and you have some presets already done. You have HD uh, 1080, 720, and so on and so on, okay? Uh, there's some templates you can use and things like that, but it's already formatted and all the um, all the requirements for video has been uh, pre-made for you. So you can just jump into that. If you're gonna make a art piece, um, it has some um, settings already made for you too. Uh, if you have like a, a poster or a postcard or whatever. So keep in mind that in Photoshop, you have some templates here that you can go straight into. Um, so back into After Effects, uh, right here, the composition is done. Right underneath is a folder, if you open that up, and all those layers in Photoshop come in as 
um, layers or as like uh, images. Okay, they're, um, the type is a Photoshop file. And what's nice about using Photoshop and After Effects since they come from the same pro, um, company, uh, you can actually keep Photoshop open and update things in here. Uh, like for example, maybe you don't want a red hat. So if you go to hats and you hit, uh, let's say control U for example, to bring up the hue and saturation and you would uh, change it to something, maybe like a green hat, hit okay, and then hit save. Normally, and it should, update and it's right, it's right there you can probably see it in the thumbnail let me just double click on cowboy look right there see it's updated let me go back to photoshop and i'm going to undo and save and then come back to after effects and it updates so that's a really good feature to have so what's nice about that is if you're working for a client and sometimes this happens clients are very undecisive you know they can't they can't make a decision right away so what ends up happening is that they'll call you or send you an email send you a text say hey we need to change the hat to green change it to green so while you're working make that change instead of having to go back and you know go into photoshop save it out bring it back into after effects probably having to redo things you know you don't actually have to do all that it updates very quickly so uh that being said we're gonna move this character. Now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here and I wanna show you something that's going on. So first thing is, is that we have multiple things in the layer, in the, in the view. So we have the clouds, the sky, and the ground. Okay, so over here, we have the land, clouds, and sky. For the time being, I really don't wanna do anything to these three layers here at the bottom. So if you look here, there's a lock. If you click on that box to add a lock to those layers, now I cannot even select it. Okay, you see how I'm not allowed to select any of those layers. So uh, my background is safe. It won't get manipulated. Now, everything else here is all separate layers. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is before I, um, and I'm moving this around, by the way, if you don't remember, holding on spacebar gives me that hand tool so I can move it around like this. So I can zoom in and move around like that. All right, the first thing I wanted to do is focus on the pivot points of each part of the body. Okay, so we're gonna come over here to the pan behind or anchor point tool. And that allows me to change this pivot point, this anchor point, okay? So let's say I wanna move it not so much in the middle, but maybe down here, okay? And if I use the rotate tool, okay, uh, excuse me, I can see where it would rotate. And I think that's a good spot, okay? The next one would be the head, okay? If you have trouble selecting anything, always remember you can click on the layer. And the head, right now, if I use the rotate tool, will rotate right there. That doesn't make sense. Okay. So then if I move his pivot point down to the neck area, and you can use W for rotate to the shortcut, that makes more sense. Be careful of where it's placed because we don't want this to happen. If you guys watch South Park, um, the Canadians have this weird thing with their heads, uh, and that's what we don't want. So again... We can maybe move it there. That seems okay. Uh, probably want it like right about there and then W and it's a check. So the rotate tool is very important in this uh, video because it's going to show us um, exactly where we want to rotate the body parts, but that's what we'll be using a lot. Okay, so rotate tool W, okay. Uh, let me move down a little bit. Let's look at his arm. Okay, uh, I'm gonna make sure I select it with the selection tool. Here's the arm. And we can see right there is the pivot. Uh, so we don't want it there. Pan behind tool, or sorry, uh, pan behind tool, and move that up to where it should be, right there, like at the so shoulder. And then you can go ahead and move it like that. Cool. The star, I think it's fine. Uh, back over here, and see it's kind of difficult, but the arm is back there. So if we get, uh, well, I may have misspelled his arm. Let me just go ahead and change that to arm. There we go. And uh, we'll go ahead and hit Y, which is the uh, anchor point tool, and then W, and then you can see his arm comes in there. Like that. And then same thing down here, Y as in yellow, and move that up to that point. And you can test it out with the rotate tool, W, right there. Okay. So like that one, Y, move it up to right behind his pants, W, 
and there's his leg. Okay. Now, if you're not happy with the placement of the leg, you can always just move it, you know, here, here, like that. Okay, I'm going to leave it like how it was. Okay. Now, the biggest problem we have right now is that everything's a separate layer, and I'm not going to animate them all separately to move them forward. That's going to be very complicated. We want to tie all these things together. So let's see what we need to tie in first. We have the helmet here. I mean, the, the hat here, rather, and the head. So the head obviously should control the hat. So if I come over here and notice that there is uh, this swirl and this drop down menu that says none here. Let's look at the swirl first, okay? Uh, the, it, they actually do the same thing, but the swirl, if we go to the hat and click that and drag it to the head. Now I'm gonna select the head and use the rotate tool and watch what happens. The hat is attached to the head. Perfect. Okay, now the body is probably gonna be the main thing. So the head here goes down to the body. Just click and drag and do that. Now if I select the body and we'll press V for the selection tool and you see it moves with the head and the hat. So let's do that for everything. Everything else is gonna go straight to the body. So the star, or you can click on here and just hit body, body. Okay, this one is not gonna have, oh sorry, this one is. This one's not, because that's the body, we're not gonna do anything there. So we're gonna go to the body, and, and that's it. Okay, we're not gonna do anything to the land. So now when I select the body, everything should move with it. Boom, 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 see how easy? Okay, let me zoom out, all right. Now, first thing I can do is just to get this going, um, and just so that you can see how easy this is, we're gonna go ahead and finish the animation. So sometimes in, in After Effects, it's better to work backwards. So I'm gonna go over to frame six and I'm gonna put them right here. Okay, just for, uh, just to show you. And then, so I'm gonna hit P, P as in position, or P as in Peter, and uh, that brings up the position option on the body. I'm gonna hit, click on the stopwatch, and that's where it'll be. Let's go over to frame, uh, so like one, okay, more or less. And then bring it over here. And maybe bring him like a little bit off the screen. And maybe he comes like up to that. So, and then they'll automatically create a new key tech right there. See that? And then what happens is that then he will slide over. That's not walking, that's sliding. Okay, so he slides over to the right, just like that. And he slides over there. Okay, and then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select that layer again, the body layer, press P to hide the position. For now, we're good. Okay, let's go ahead and work on the legs. Okay, so we have the left leg, which is that one, and the right, le right leg right over there. Okay, so then let's come in. So we zoom in, and we're gonna see when he starts. So, starts right about there. Again, if you wanna make this easier on yourself, if you go back to the body and press the position so you can see where everything begins. And sometimes, uh, you know what, I'll make this a little bit easier for you. Let's actually pull them off screen. No, 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 we'll keep them here. I don't wanna make this confusing. So right here, okay, so then uh, the right leg position, it's gonna begin right about there, and it's gonna look odd. I'm not trying to make this look perfect. I want you guys to uh, start practicing with this. And you can do this with, uh, let's turn the, this one off, and go to these two. So then uh, we're gonna go ahead and hit the position on both of those, and all you have to do is just open them up, and then we'll go ahead and close them the other way. So he takes, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I just noticed I did the wrong option. So let's turn that off. I meant to do rotation. So R and R, okay. Rotation, not position. All right, and then we'll go ahead and place it how it's supposed to be, like that. We'll move ahead a little bit right here. And then we'll cross them. So he looks like he's walking. So there it is. There's the walk. Okay. All right about there, what we can do now is let's select this and those. Um, what I did was I made a box selection. Hold on shift and select the bottom two as well. I'm gonna hit control C and control V. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, 
have to do them one at a time. I uh, didn't want to copy them. So we'll just do that. Okay. And then we'll see how that looks. And then we can do uh, control paste again. Okay. And then let's go back down here. Select those. Control C. Let's move to the synagogue spot. Control V. And then move it. If you hold on shift, it'll snap to your key text. So right there. And control V. And so what it looks like, looks like he's walking there. And it stops there. It's not perfect, but it gives us the idea. Okay. And if we need him, it kind of like stops uh, before he moves. So what I'm going to do is just fix that. Let's go to body position and let's just move him off a little bit. So it works a little bit better. Let's do the same thing with the arm. Okay. Let's hide this one. Hit R. Uh, this one is P and this one is R. Let's go to right arm and press R there, right, left arm. Okay. And let's zoom in. Same thing. Let's hit the stopwatch on both. Okay. And we can go ahead and maybe bring that one out, bring that one out like that. So, or do the opposite of uh, the legs. Okay. Then when he comes to this point, he can rotate out. And then uh, since the other one's like hidden, it's best to get the layer and come out there. So arms open. And then we'll do arms. Just do copy and paste. Just like that one, copy and paste. Move a little bit ahead. Right about there. Just like that one, copy and paste. Just like the other arm, copy and paste if you can't see it. There it is. Okay, we're done with that. Let's press R, press R. Let's go to head. Okay, and we'll give him like a little bit of a sway with the head. So again, R for rotation. Start off that way. And then we'll have him maybe go back. And you don't have to copy and paste. You can make it a little bit more random if you wanted to. that back and forth maybe a little tip there at the end and then with the hat let's hit oh first before we do that let's close rotation go to the hat let's press p and what i want the hat to do is maybe like bounce a little bit uh so we'll do that there start the stopwatch and maybe uh give it a, we use the selection tool and give it a little bounce so it goes up uh, let's bring it down earlier. And again, this one you can copy and paste. Copy and paste. You know, and then if it's not perfect, it's probably better. So it's a little more random. The hat kind of bounces there. And the star will do, uh, let's close this one first before we move on. Um, and the star here will do just a simple rotation. Uh, so it goes back and forth. Stopwatch on. Right here, back and forth. And again, you can copy and paste that. Okay, very simple like that. And let's just zoom out now and we'll watch the animation of a little cowboy walking down in the desert looking for some bad guys. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Okay, and then we do a simple render from here. Okay, and before we do, we'll just go ahead and uh, we'll minimize our work area. So I'm going to move my indicator to about eight seconds. Press N. All right, and that will render just this piece, this light gray area will only get rendered. And to do the rendering, make sure you this is selected. So it's indicated right here with the blue line. Go to composition. We're going to go to add to uh, Adobe Media Encoder. And click on that. The encoder will open up. Um, you can also follow, also follow the same procedures for um, rendering out of uh, After Effects. Encoder is just better to render out of. It's uh, much easier and faster. Uh, we'll just wait for it to populate in here. Here it is. Uh, this is the normal settings I use, the H264 uh, and YouTube settings. I just got to change its location to 
uh, put it here at Cowboy, we'll hit save, and I'll go ahead and hit render. And then all we're going to do is just wait for it to render out of the encoder. And it should go by really fast. There it is. Okay, once it's done, you know that you have this green check mark telling you that it is finished. And we're good to go. And that's what um, all you have to do for your project. Now, I'm providing the Photoshop file for this cowboy scene so that you can do the same animation to practice with. Or if you wanted to try something new, you can go into Photoshop or Illustrator or whichever uh, software you like. Make sure that everything is in separate layers. Uh, I prefer you guys working with either Illustrator or Photoshop just because it's a, an easier transition into After Effects. And then uh, once you've done that, you can, like I said, you can make up your own uh, or just use this guy. You can have him do something else. Maybe have him jump or um, have a little bounce as he walks, whatever you want to do. Once you're done, submit that. You can either submit the file or a YouTube link and uh, we'll take a look from there. Uh, so that's it for this video. Uh, good luck and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Either send me an email or contact me in the office hours. Okay. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.